Good evening, welcome on in to From Day One. Today we have a soft sit who doesn't realize that driving without a license is illegal. Today we have a sovereign citizen who doesn't realize he's a sovereign citizen and loses his car in the confusion. So let's begin. Thank you, Father Skeptic. <laughs> hey, shut the door. Come back here. Come back here. Pulled you over. Get your hands out of your pockets. Okay. Pulled you over today. Okay. Because you have to spend a driver's license. I ran your tags. Okay. I found that the registered owner was. Yeah. Can you do it? 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 Can you do
Bye bye, Shannon. So, I ran his license plate, which you have no reasonable expectation of privacy in your license plate. We don't have to have a reason to run your license plate. We found that the registered owner of this vehicle has a suspended driver's license. So we saw him in the car, pulled him over, and he jumped out immediately. Started arguing with us, so I know how he studied law, which cool. I hope he did, that's great. But uh, it's an unclassified misdemeanor in the state of Arkansas to drive on a suspended driver's license. That's why he's put him in handcuffs, he's tense enough. So to avoid a fight, we went ahead and put him in handcuffs because that's where that was going. So he was being arrested. Yes, yeah. for driving on a suspended driver's license. You were arrested for a misdemeanor? And then, that's what I'm saying, 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 I think they're just as stupid. And we just got a gun from a convicted felon. Okay. okay. Let's not forget that he's a sovereign citizen. So that's one less gun in the hands of a certified lunatic as well. You think I That is correct. We'll be back in just about three seconds. Two, one, now.
Because I'm pretty sure you just said overturn and just to disagree with me. Because that's, that's what he did. Quite obviously not true. Overturn. Overturn. I love these dogs. Underturn. They definitely watched their fair share of sovereign citizens getting owned on YouTube. Because from this point on, they continuously troll him about his soft party and belief. Now, as far as Kansas City Glover, that wasn't overturned. It was a 2019 case where a circuit court in Kansas found that an officer could pull over a vehicle on the public roadway if the registration came back to an invalid driver. The district court overturned the circuit court. The appellate court overturned the district court. The Kansas Supreme Court overturned the appellate court. And the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the Kansas Supreme Court and held that pulling over a car because the license plate comes back to an invalid driver's license is reasonable and not a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Okay. Right. So what is the uh what is the what is the paramount pillar of Fourth Amendment involving law enforcement? What what's the Supreme Court case? I like that one, Wikipediology. But it's required by law if you have that driver's license. And yours has been suspended. Correct. Which is a misdemeanor offense in the state of Arkansas, which is why you were taken into custody. So I was trying to explain to you, we could have avoided all of that arguing back and forth if you would just, you know. If somebody is driving on a driver's license, I have to tow their vehicle. I'm not, allowed to, I'm not allowed to let somebody come get it. I have to tow it. And for the United States Supreme Court case law, South Dakota versus Opperman, I can conduct an inventory search of your vehicle prior to towing it. Please! While conducting an inventory search of your vehicle, discover a firearm underneath your driver's seat. When we ran you an ACIC, when we checked to see if your license was valid, we saw that you were a convicted felon. You are in possession of a firearm, which is a felony offense in the state of Arkansas. Mm, so just so you're aware, felony. I'm being charged with um, possession of a firearm by certain persons. Uh, no, you do, though. I'm a police officer. I'm trying to figure out, you're trying to talk about projection if there's anyone who's lacking the self-awareness to understand what's going on it's you and that officer is speaking to you in common english not legalese if it was legalese it would sound a little something like this upon the date of the incident in question the defendant here and after referred to as Dipshit was apprehended Dipshit. by duly authorized agents of the state and subsequently charged with the commission of the criminal offenses of possession of a firearm by a person that was previously convicted of a felony in contravention of Arkansas Code Annotated 573-103 and operation of a motor vehicle on a public roadway without a valid driver's license in contravention to Arizona Code Annotated 2710662, both of which are actions prescribed under the laws of the state of Arkansas and subject to legal repercussions. So now that we've all smoked that sweet, sweet legalese, let's inform our stupid game contestant what stupid prizes he won. So you're being charged with 
possession of firearm by certain persons, attempt to influence a law enforcement officer, driving on suspended license, and driving a vehicle with improper window tint. Is the front right passenger window on your vehicle tested? Do you have a 4% light level transmission in the Arkansas? The windows to the left and right of the driver are marked at a 25% or greater light transmission level. Also, upon checking you and ACIC, you discovered you had a failure to pay warrant at a Little Rock traffic court. So you're being charged with one count of failure to pay. And then you had two additional warrants at a Little Rock uh, environmental court for failure to appear. Uh, those warrants are LR21-422 and LR20-4168. You're being charged with two counts of failure to appear out of Little Rock environmental court. Okay. So I can do it right the next time. Okay. 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 A mayor is elected. A mayor appoints a chief of police. 
Right. He's a police, hired police officers. What is the difference between a sheriff? A sheriff is elected and appoints sheriff's deputy. Yeah, brother, you got to go French flags here. Yeah, did that officer really just ask if there were any gold French flags there? At this point, Officer Chad is just being cruel and unusual to the mental midget. It should be remanded to Pete Barnes' sovereign citizen taser task force immediately. So what, what I'm asking you is what is the difference? <laughs> What can a sheriff do that I can't do? This is what I'm Yes. Let's do it. Please. Help me. It's a short term for copper. And the term is derived from when police officers used to wear copper badges. Absolutely. So what does cop stand for? Okay. That's the version that some people say. You can look at the Black Law Dictionary. The what? Black Law Dictionary. What is that? The Law Dictionary. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I've read Charles to the realization that you are in fact a sovereign citizen. And just go ahead and embrace it. I one hundred percent agree. You're a sovereign citizen, so you've essentially given up on being successful in life already, and you might as well embrace it. Embrace it like you embrace the lead sport when you eat your play doh pancake. <laughs> No, because everything you try to face, and if, and if this is going down the list of Charles, Charles, if any of this, this thing is, this thing is, I didn't have to break the window to drag you out the car. And Charles, if any of this conversation is offending you, stop it. I'm actually quite enjoying it. So, if it's bothering you, will stop. I like guess the one thing missing from Charles is a big Don't call it a whole. What is a whole? Uh, something driven on the street by a motor, powered by a typically combustion engine. Uh, it, it gets you from point A to I don't even know what that is, Charles. Were you driving or traveling? It's old. It's old, man. I'm feeling like we're getting to the, we're getting to the travel part. Well, every, everything I do is framed in the Constitution of the United States. Which part of it was? Well, it'll be over. Okay, how is that unconstitutional? You had no reason. You had no reason. R.A.N. Yeah, I had a reasonable suspicion to pull my car. I had reasonable suspicion to believe you were driving on a driver's license. Actually, they're going to say, look at uh, all these different Supreme Court cases. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, because people are not going to want to get this. Yeah, because people are not going to want to get this. Yeah, because people are not going to want to get this. Yeah, because people are not going to want to get this. They can overturn it. They can overturn it. You're going to go up. They can't be overturned. 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 They can't be you know what I think you're mad about? I think you're mad you got caught with a gun. You probably shouldn't have. That's not allowed to have. I'm mad. I think you. I think you. Which one? All of them. A legal scholar like you has a lot of work to do because. That argument will not hold up in the Supreme Court. You're going to need to clearly identify which one of your civil rights were violated and exactly how. Simply stating that all of your rights were violated will make you look stupider than you already look. And you already look like an idiot. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. The original video was over an hour long, so obviously I cut out a lot. So if you'd like to see the original, uncut version, a link will be in the description. And while you're there, go ahead and drop a sub to Arkansas Police Activity. They're the ones that found the video, and I would really appreciate it. But not before you sub to my channel. Leave a like if you liked the video, a dislike if you disliked it, and a comment below. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.
It's our job to keep you moving. With a full range of services from oil changes and tire rotations to filters, wipers, and more, we've got what your car needs right when you need it. So you're ready for whatever's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care. That's the job for Jerry. We go to a sentencing in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The defendant is 18-year-old Brendan Wazinski, who's charged with impersonating a sheriff's deputy. Six months earlier, Wazinski was driving an unmarked car with a police siren. He pulled over a driver for speeding. Albuquerque police officer Danny Anzo came upon the scene and, thinking something off about the situation, decided to check it out. Sheriff's story doesn't end there. 
Kuczynski violates his probation by failing to get that psych evaluation. But he gets a break when the judge gives him an extra two weeks to complete the evaluation. We're told of his extension, Kuczynski presses his law. I can try the best I can, Your Honor. I mean, I have honestly a lot going on right now, and it's just stressful. But I'm going to find my hardest to get it done. Okay, just to let you know, we all have a lot going on, and it's very stressful for everyone, but this is very important, and I'm not going to give you longer than that. Kuczynski did eventually complete his evaluation, and was able to avoid jail time, and hopefully his days of impersonating an officer are over. This looks really bad, and this screams whacker. As for the driver, Kuczynski pulled over, he was, of course, ready to go. Next, we go to the Miami Dade Courthouse. Judge Catherine Fuller's presiding over a bond hearing. The defendant, Calvin Lloyd Griffith, allegedly broke into a local school and stole an employee's car. Griffith was arrested and is here on charges of grand theft, burglary, and trespassing. He also violated his probation from a previous car theft. Calvin Lloyd Griffin Jr. on page 12. <laughs> Good morning. Mr. Griffin is charged with burglary, petty theft, grand theft of a vehicle, and trespass. Yeah. He's on probation. Uh, he's out on probation, Your Honor. Yeah, I'm on probation. I'm on probation. Okay. Officer, yeah, yeah, anyway, because I smoke weed and cocaine. So the officer. I smoke weed and cocaine. The court officials decide to cut Griffin's mic off to prevent him from talking over everyone. So the Okay, you're Calvin Griffin? I mean, she's under the bottom of that. Oh, okay. As Judge Cooler continues looking over the paperwork, Griffiths continues to try to get the attention of the judge. Okay. But with Judge Cooler unable to hear Griffith, he decides to try a different approach. <laughs> <laughs> Not impressed with Griffith's twerking abilities, the judge moves on with the case. State is requesting the owner set the bond or reset the case in division tomorrow because his actions violate his probation. Judge Pooler agrees with the state attorney and sets Griffith's bond at $18,500. And there's a state order from Miami Edison Senior High. If you should get out, do not go back there. You're not a student anymore. Okay? Thank you for coming in. As the judge moves on to the next, less entertaining defendant, Judge Pooler looks back fondly over the time with Calvin Griffin. the last guy to come back and teach us how to dance. Pretty smooth guy. Next, we're in Newark, New Jersey where Judge James Connery is overseeing a divorce hearing. On one side is Benjamin Taylor, and his attorney, Yvette ramos Alvarez, And on the other is his soon-to-be ex-wife. To establish Taylor's total yearly income, a copy of his Social Security earnings statement has been requested by his wife's attorney. Now Ms. Kolsky comes back after everything was fish except for the Social Security earnings statements, which he doesn't have. He gets the Social Security every year in the case. The earnings statement. He gets his earnings statement. He gets it. He gets it every year. So she asked for it. Why didn't he provide it? He doesn't have it. He threw it away? I would presume. Oh, no, come on. As you can see, Judge Convery is not buying the dog ate my homework story. So he decides to do a quick courtroom poll to prove his point. Don't you get it? I get it. You get it? You get it? Everybody gets it. Social Security sends it to your home every year. Alvarez, however, disagrees based on her own experience. No, I don't get it. They sent it to my home four years ago. I haven't received it in the last four years. This is the final moment before Judge Convery says something a little correct. Judge. Alvarez is taken aback.
back on the judge's comment. Not only is she of Hispanic descent, but she's also the former president of the Hispanic Bar Association of New Jersey. Judge, that was a totally inappropriate comment. I didn't mean it. Moments listen to me. As Judge Codbury tries to backpedal, Alvarez moves forward right out the door. Then comes the awkward silence. Alvarez returned to the courtroom ten minutes later. Judge Conbury apologized, but the damage had been done. Alvarez later filed a misconduct complaint against Judge Conbury, which, along with other public complaints, led to a public reprimand by the New Jersey Supreme Court. Next, we're in a family court in Las Vegas, Nevada. 26-year-old Monica Contreras is here to vacate a temporary restraining order filed against her by her estranged husband. The routine hearing lasts just a few minutes. Contreras' two-year-old daughter joins her just off camera. So I'm just going to close the case out and dissolve the order. All right, thank you. Okay. But before Contreras is able to leave, courtroom marshal Ron Fox takes her to another room to perform a drug search. Her daughter plays with hearing master Patricia Doniger on the bench. Moments later, Contreras is back in the courtroom. But there's a problem. She begins telling the other courtroom marshal that she wasn't comfortable with how the drug search was performed. Still searching Contreras' purse, Marshal Fox doesn't like what he's hearing. Okay, so the door stands, hands up. Why would I do that? Why would I be Making a false allegation against a police officer? In this context, that wouldn't even be a crime in Clark County. Hearing Master Patricia Doniger turns her back on the situation. Then, without getting any further explanation of the charges, she asked to have Contreras' daughter removed from the courtroom. Can we do something with the little girl? If you call it Child Haven, woman. Child Haven is the county's child protective services facility. In just a matter of minutes, Contreras went from appearing at a routine court hearing to getting arrested and now having her daughter taken away from her. You're saying it. I'm turning around and we'll wear all the hands. Okay. What did I do? What did I do? No, I'm not going to go. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. I don't want to get charges. I don't want to kill anyone. I just wanted to end. Jimmy, I got court. I still have to do this, so. Arrest her. I take the case. I'm not going to do that. 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 I'm not
Contreras is taken to jail, formally charged with providing false information to a police officer and disturbing the peace. Her daughter's turned over to special services until the girl's father picked her up later that day. Two months after the incident, Contreras filed a complaint against Marshall Fox, claiming that in addition to improper protocol, the officer also groped her breast and buttocks during the drug search. An investigation by Clark County Internal Affairs would validate her claims. She was later awarded $200,000 in a court settlement. As for those responsible for the courtroom injustice, the perpetrator, Marshal Ron Fox, was fired immediately following the investigation. Marshal James Kenyon was later relieved of his duties, and hearing master Patricia Doniger was out two years later after the video went public. Next, we're down under for a hearing in Adelaide, Australia. Daniel Nicholson, a 35-year-old father of four, has been out on bail awaiting trial for weapons charges. Today, he's in court to find out whether Magistrate Sue O'Connor will allow him to remain out on pre-trial release. Apparently surprised by the ruling, Nicholson turns to his attorney. What's going on, Beth? But before he gets an answer, Magistrate O'Connor shuts down the conversation. Take the seat. Take the seat. Yes, please, miss. Please, miss. I'll show you what this is all about. Just moments later, perhaps realizing he's about to be locked up, Nicholson decides to bail himself out of the situation. <laughs> Ecstasy. 
She then asked the state for its recommendation. Your Honor, I'm recommending a $7,500 bond that we can contact no return. Noting the allegations, Your Honor, there were three children present in the home that Mr. Lewis was attempting to break into. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lunder. Lewis objects, but the judge moves on to the defense and then renders her decision. She sets his bond at $5,000, which is significantly better than the $7,500 requested by the prosecution. Next, we're in Charleston, West Virginia, for a pretrial hearing. Andrew, 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 Henry T. Eldon is in the courtroom, but he is refusing the magistrate's order to come forward to the defendant's table. That's right. The judge called him thrice. Eldon is facing multiple charges, including fraudulent official proceedings and fraudulent service of indebtedness related to falsely filing claims with the court. Today, he's joined in the courtroom by a friend who's recording the proceedings on his cell phone and getting involved himself. I'm a witness, okay? Okay, what I'm saying is he is present, and he's chosen not to step up. He's asking not for a point of lawyer. He doesn't need an attorney. So you're acting in his capacity? I'm not acting. I'm a witness. This is American National. American National is another nod to the sovereign citizen movement that both he and the defendant identify with. Eventually, Eldon does respond to the magistrate, Ward Harshbarger, but still refuses to come forward. The court reporter has to go sign this because he doesn't see it. Okay, well, get up in your seat now, and you can wait for that. You've got some preliminary thing. We're all ready for the court reporter to be. Do it now. All right, this is State v. Henry T. Eldon, Jr. Mr. Eldon, I need you to have a seat at the defendant's table. For the record, you have to sit down. You sit down and not say another word. Seemingly getting more aggravated, the magistrate turns to his courtroom deputy for assistance. You may have a seat right there. You may have a seat right there. Eldon finally gets up to the stand before the judge, but it won't be for long. You are going to be held in contempt. All right, Mr. Eldon, will you stand up for me, please, Your Honor? Place your hands behind your back, if you would. And who are you? And do you have a warrant? Do you have a warrant? Do you have a warrant? I just want to make a word by the judge that he wants me to take you into custody for constructive due process, okay? But before the magistrate had the defendant arrested and cuffed, he pulls a final move out of every parent's playbook and counts to three. Have a seat. Have a seat. I would like to speak to you. Do you have any information to present? I don't know how long this is going to go on. Last warning. You won't forget it. You won't ask any more questions. Again, locked in a stalemate, the magistrate decides to just get down to business. How would you do? I would like to see your oath of office. I'd like to see your letter accepting and acknowledging your office. And I would like to see the same for the prosecuting attorney. And you know the names of everyone in this room. I need that before I understand what's going on, sir. So the answer, and I will answer for him, is not guilty. I haven't made any plea, nor should you. All right. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I don't care whether you accept it. I did not in your opposition. Fork him out. Okay. Or reserve. The court wouldn't confirm the details, but according to Eldon, he did not appear for his next court hearing, was arrested on a bench warrant, and served two weeks in jail. He also says the original fraudulent service and fraudulent official proceedings charges against him were later dropped. Next, we're in Bakersfield, California, 
at the arraignment of Tobias Roman. The 27-year-old was charged with multiple crimes, including attempted robbery, threatening with attempt to terrorize, and exhibiting a deadly weapon for allegedly stalking a female employee at a shopping mall. And now his initial hearing is off to a rocky start. Once on his feet, the judge then asks him a standard procedural question. Mr. Roman, what is your true correct name? Tobias, my first name. That's it. Giggle or Tobias. That's it. Don't call me there now. Giggles may be his street name, but there's nothing funny about the crimes he's accused of committing. It's not a real point of public defender who represents Mr. Roman. The charges of Mr. Roman are attempted robbery. It's all about something like that. Mr. Roman, you need to be quiet. After being interrupted and then told to be quiet, Judge Charles Brown gives the defendant a final warning. You have one more chance in the interview. For a second, it appears Giggles might quiet down, but his silence is too clear. But as he's being let out of the courtroom, Roman gets in the last word. The judge heard that comment loud and clear. I have noted for the record, Mr. Roman's statement on the record that he will murder me if he sees me. I'm going to request law enforcement to take the appropriate action. Tobias Roman later pled no contest to the charge of threatening a public official, was sentenced to eight months in prison. Of his original charges, all were dismissed except for threatening with intent to terrorize. He pled no contest and was sentenced to three years in prison. Right, Nelson Walker. Next, we're in Miami-Dade County, where Nelson Walker is charged with a crime where the evidence may be, as they say in the law, in plain view. All right, you're charged with stealing a dolphin jersey? Hmm. Um. Judge Ward seems a bit suspicious of the situation, and when she begins asking Walker about the dolphin's jersey... And with that, we'll bring the evening to a close. Please come again next time as we continue to march along here from day one. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and good night.